Having grown up listening to Pink Floyd, and now having spent several years teaching the solos to my guitar students here, I've learned several things from David Gilmour. One is that space is very important in a guitar solo. Two is that bends are supposed to go to a very particular pitch. Three is that there's a lot to be said for finesse and dynamics in a solo. Four, there's a lot more to rock and roll than just minor pentatonic. And five, arpeggios are like magic, especially sus4 arpeggios. And that's what we're going to do in this video today. What is an arpeggio first? An arpeggio is just outlining the notes of a chord in order. So rather than playing a scale, you just take the three or four or more notes of a chord and you play them in some order. It might go root third fifth, or it might go third fifth root, or it might go seven root third fifth. It doesn't really matter. It's still an arpeggio. And it's thinking more about chords and not about scales. Arpeggios allow us to break out of playing the scales that we're playing, especially the pentatonic scales, and it allows us to really highlight the notes of the chord at that moment in the song. So if we just take a simple D chord, oh man, that sounds good. <laughs> a D chord has a root, a third, and a fifth. In this case, it's in a different order. It doesn't matter. The one that we're interested in most today is sus4. And sus4 just means this. Instead of having a third in a chord, which we would normally have, we raise that so it becomes a fourth. Take your standard D chord, and you add your pinky to the third fret of the top string. That's in so many songs, so many rock songs, so many folk songs, so many country songs, but we can use that sus4 in arpeggios in our solos. And that's one of the things that David Gilmour has done so well. So let's say we take this D shape and we move it. We could literally just move it up an octave. So now we're up here at 14, uh, 15, 14. So a D chord, right? I just took up, up an octave and I'm, I'm no longer playing the open string. I mean, I could because it's D, but in this case, I'm not. It's just that. So a very basic arpeggio would just be maybe descending those notes or ascending, whatever. And when the song is on a D chord, that actually will be pretty cool in itself. But the cool thing that David Gilmore did was he added the sus4 first. So he goes four, three, and then it's root and fifth. It doesn't matter about the order. We're just holding the chord shape anyway, and we're just memorizing the shape. It goes like this. It's magic because that four has just a little bit of tension. It's not, aggressive tension at all. It's really just a, a slight lift. So that in itself can spark tons of creative ideas. I mean, if we're on a D chord in any kind of song, let's say maybe it's a kind of a Pink Floyd-like song. That alone is pretty sweet, right? That's a D chord right now change the rhythm, right? We want to be able to incorporate that into a longer line as well. And one of the cool things that Gilmore did was when he would do these arpeggios, he would often then start descending just a little more after. And he would do that often on the same string. So we can just memorize the pattern. It's in this case, it's not a pentatonic shape, right? We're thinking chord shape at first. And then we're gonna slide down. And then one more. So what we get is. And in fact, that is still just an arpeggio of a D chord. Uh, it's harder to visualize the whole thing, but it doesn't 
really matter. You just memorize the sequence. And um, really, when you play this lick a lot, you just know those distances. So let's hear the longer arpeggio. I just walked back up again, right? Now, this particular loop I've got going here, the chords are D and then A. So, in fact, we could just use the same arpeggio on the A. We could do it on the D and the A, which would be cool, or we could do something else on the D and then do the arpeggio on the A. But in order to do the arpeggio on the A, we need to be able to find A in that shape. Because remember, this is our D chord, right? The root in this case, this is a little harder, but the root in this case is on the B string because that third fret of the B string is a D note. So we need to move up the fretboard till this becomes an A chord, right? We have D, E, F, G, A. How do I know that? It's because I know the notes on the B string really well. You could use a different landmark as a lot of my students do. You could think the A here. It's way over here, but it can work as a landmark, right? It doesn't matter. This would be the D shape for A, right? So now that we have found our chord shape, the chord shape gives us our arpeggio shape. With the more extended line, right? We can go back up again. So I'm gonna do the arpeggio on the D and then I'm just gonna do the same arpeggio on the A. Why not? That works, it's back to D. A. And you can hear how the notes really highlight the chords underneath. If we were just kind of meandering on pentatonic, we wouldn't hear those chords jump out as much. Not that there's anything wrong with the pentatonic scales. I mean, we're playing those most of the time, and so is David Gilmour. But these arpeggios really help to break up that pentatonic sound and help to highlight the chords underneath. Now, just as we can play the sus4 of the chord, we could also bend to the sus4 of the chord. And this is something that David Gilmer does do. So we're picturing my D shape. And we know, we memorize, that this note here is the third. That's the four, right? That's what we were playing. Instead of playing the four, we'll bend to the four. That's gonna sound really familiar if you know Pink Floyd at all. <laughs> <laughs> right? And now I'm not going to play his exact lick. I'm going to play it differently. I'm going to play that bend and I'm just going to descend through the arpeggio like we did before. Right? Let's hear that in the context of the track. another kind of Gilmer bend there. Okay, so now I'm gonna do it, uh, the bend on the D arpeggio and the bend on the A arpeggio. Now there's another common arpeggio shape that David Gilmour uses because that allows him, allows us, to play this kind of sus4 arpeggio in different places. We don't always want to have to jump around to this shape because as chords change, we have to move a little ways, right? The D's there, the A's there. It's not that far, but depending on the chord sequence, it might end up being pretty far. So we're gonna use a different arpeggio shape for the A. We're gonna think of this cowboy A chord, campfire A chord, whatever you like to call it, open A chord. And just like the D shape moved up, the A shape moves up now, right? 
So A becomes B becomes C becomes D becomes E becomes F becomes G becomes A again. It's there at the 14th fret. And then all we have to do is just memorize where is the sus4 of that chord. Just like if we were playing these campfire chords, the sus4 is pinky again. So it's just the, the highest note that you're uh, fretting goes up a, a half step. So the D went to there. Now the A sus4 goes to, starting to sound like Tom Petty. So now we know our chord shape, therefore we know our arpeggio, right? The sus4 A arpeggio would be pretty sweet. You can kind of hold the chord and play the arpeggio and let them all ring. It's a different effect than uh, playing each note individually and stopping the previous one or just fretting each one, to put it another way which I think is more how David Gilmour does it. Both are cool. One sounds more like a chord because they're ringing together. The other sounds more like you've made a really clever choice of notes, even though in fact, it's pretty easy because once you start seeing these chord shapes, Matt, you know what these are, right? So now let's combine our original D sus4 arpeggio with this new A sus4 arpeggio on the second chord. That's the A one, right? Here's D with the bend. Now A. Yeah, you can see how I even repeated the last note there. Why not? It just felt like it wanted another beat there. So you can change the rhythms, you can duplicate notes. Let's add the bend to the A because the same thing applies, right? If we can bend that note on the D chord to get to the sus4, we can bend that this equivalent note on the A chord to get to its sus4. So my A sus4 arpeggio is, therefore the first bend is, Pre-bend, that's pretty sweet. I do like that. Maybe let's see if we can combine that to the D and then the A with a pre-bend. Hmm, maybe. That's pretty cool. We also extended our D arpeggio, so now we're gonna extend our A arpeggio. And it actually extends in the same way. You're gonna go down a whole step, down a half step. So it ends up being pretty easy. There we go. Down a whole step, down a half step. If that's a lot for you right now, don't panic. You'll get there. Just take one thing away from every lesson you get, and eventually all those things are gonna add up, and you'll be doing this kind of stuff. So let's do that longer line on A. I'll do a simple one on D, and then a longer line on A. So we're gonna add that A root to the end of that A arpeggio. I like that one, I do that one a lot. So I'll do D, A, longer arpeggio getting to the root, if I have time, see if I can fit it in. That's another thing that he does do is that he will slide down the extra notes of that arpeggio. Quite often. So now we have to move it to, let's say, other chords of the song. In this particular jam track, I've got D, 
A, D, A, and then I've got C, G, C, G. So I'm going to see if I can do an arpeggio on every single one of them. Now, maybe that's overdoing it. Maybe you don't want to do that many arpeggios in a song. But for the purposes of practicing the technique, that's the best thing you can do is force yourself to just do arpeggio after arpeggio, right? So we start with the D. How easy was that? So that works out great. That just happens to be two frets down. So you can literally just do the same arpeggio shapes and you just move them down. So let's look at that. So many things from David Gilmour over the years by listening to his music and by playing his solos. These arpeggios just happen to be one of my favorites. I'm going to put a video on the screen here for you from my channel. You can check it out. The channel is Guitar Lessons Vancouver. My name is Blue Morris and I'm going to make a video here every week for about a year for as long as I can. And I'll see you next time.